today we shall talk about money and near money what are the types the differences and the similarities let's talk about money the photo you see is full of money the basic criteria is that it is accepted right you will accept these notes i will accept these notes and the whole general public will accept these notes because this is a medium of exchange if you want to exchange something supposingly you want to buy a piece of clothes you want to buy a pair of shoes almira furniture anything for anything to buy you need money right it cannot be that you want to buy furniture and you will give up your clothes this doesn't happen so how do you purchase the things if there is no medium of exchange it will be just as the barter system it will be very difficult to find out that 2 kg of rice will be equivalent to one pair of shoes so this discrimination how will you find out the terms this money facilitates the medium of exchange you can sell anything you can buy anything any goods any services money is a means of payment these notes which you can see on the screen they are readily accepted they are commonly accepted by people in exchange for goods and services this is the legal tender money everybody accepts is one thing and nobody can deny to accept it so this is the legal tender medium of exchange in place of these notes if a pen or a pencil or a match box or a candle or anything is accepted as a medium of exchange then that particular item will be considered as money further it is a measure of value what is a price price is the value expressed in terms of money money has this primary concept that it can measure everything you can dominate you can denominate that particular item in terms of money be it curtains be it your furniture everything has a value in terms of money so money is the common denominator it is a measure of value it is a store of value it is a liquid store of value it is very easy to spend if you have 1 lakh rupees it's so easy go to a mall and spend that 1 lakh it is very easy to spend it is easily acceptable and it is easy to store if you have money you can purchase any xyz asset at any any time you know so these are the basic characteristics of money which these notes have now money consists of currency notes which are issued by the central bank the apex authority and money also considers of coins which is issued by the ministry of finance be very clear that coins are not issued by the reserve bank one rupee note and the coins these two things they are issued by the ministry of finance now we come to the term near money as the name denotes it is money which is near to money it is not actual money it is having nearness to the money the examples i have stated here are the bonds debentures bills of exchange and the shares we should be discussing all these terms in the slides to follow but in this slide i will be talking about what is the meaning of near money something which has nearness to money it is not money proper it is not actual money it is just a substitute of money it is equivalent to money we can say that it is perfect replacement of money you know the assets which cannot be technically called money but they are claims to money and they perform more or less the same functions of money near money possesses many many characteristics of money they have very high degree of liquidity supposingly you have a bond of 1 lakh rupees okay that can be converted to money without wasting time you don't have to wait for so long to convert it into money it can be very easily and conveniently converted to money and then you can spend the money the way you want so here i'm talking about the degree of liquidity so the near money it has a high degree of liquidity you can convert it inexpensively means with not wasting money you don't have to waste the money to convert it into money proper supposingly you have a necklace of 5 lakh rupees when you purchased it you paid the jeweler 5 lakh rupees after some time you needed cash for a particular event so you thought that let me exchange this set this necklace back to the jeweler and get hard cash now when you go to the jeweler 
it can be possible that the jeweler says no i'll be deducting these making charges i will be deducting this polish so instead of paying you the actual amount of money which you spent he may be paying you a little less and that too it may time it may take time you may have to head to two three jewelers to find out who is giving you the best deal but in case of near money they have high degree of liquidity and you don't have to waste your money to convert it into money proper that is called it can be easily converted to money inexpensively but the point is you cannot directly make transactions using near money you have a bond okay you are going to say a furniture shop you cannot say tell the person that please give me this piece of uh, furniture give me this table and in exchange i'm giving you this bond no this doesn't happen when you are buying a piece of furniture you have to pay him hard cash so first you uh, convert your bond to actual cash and then go to furniture shop to buy uh, the piece of furniture you have to convert it into money proper so Uh, this near money is not the document or that bond you cannot exchange for anything so you have to convert it into money proper before you spend it and it is converted to money without loss of nominal value it has a high degree of liquidity just as i told you and it is just near to money performs more or less the same functions of money but it is equivalent to money i repeat it is not equal to money near money highly liquid we agree but it is not as liquid as the money proper now when i talk about the types of near money the first in the list comes is the bills of exchange the students who are from commerce background they must be very well aware what is the meaning of this term but we will just in a small short note i will tell you what is the bill of exchange taking an example supposingly A is purchasing certain items from B for a sum of twenty thousand rupees, but at this moment A has no cash to pay to B. So what he will do is he will sign a bill of exchange. It is a signed paper written on the stamp paper. It is, and it is written that A will pay twenty thousand rupees to B after a fixed period of say three months. Now after three months. b he will go back to a and present his bill and can get his 20000 rupees back so the transaction of this purchase and sale also took place at the due course and after 3 months b is happy that he is getting his money back so a is able to continue with his commercial transaction and b is also able to recover the money there is one more point in this that in case before 3 months b wants his money he can approach a bank and he can get the bill discounted from the bank the bank will give him this 20000 after deducting bank's commission and this will solve the purpose of b he can get his money before the due date as well when the due date will come then the bank will take this bill of exchange back to a and he will recover the amount from a so this is what is called bills of exchange in short i have tried to explain now the first type of near money we are talking about example is the bill of exchange it is a promise to pay a specified sum of money on a specified date generally after 3 months or 90 days bills of exchange are a commercial bills just as i told you in the example these bills are drawn in connection with the commercial transactions b type is the finance bills when a person lends money to another person in that case these type of finance bills are drawn upon the other and the third is the treasury bills treasury bills are those finance bills towards which the government raises money government is in need of money it raises these short period funds it collects the money from the general public and pays interest to the public these bills are generally issued at discount and redeemed at par for example a 100 rupee treasury bill will be sold at rupees 90 and when the time comes to redeem it when the government has to pay back the money it will be paying back at 100 so sold at 90 redeemed at 100 so this is how generally the treasury bills function next type of near money example is bond it is an instrument for borrowing for comparatively longer periods treasury bills for a short period of time and these bonds are for longer period of time 
in this likewise these are the promise to pay fixed sum of money by way of interest annually for a specified time and to repay the capital sum borrowed at the end of the period if the bond is for 5 years you will be repaid the amount after 5 years and if it is for 10 years the same this method of borrowing is usually adopted by the government and the big industrial units because the amount is also high and when the money is borrowed by the firms or the companies then the term is changed to debentures the way the shares are issued the students from accounting background they must be well understanding what debentures are debentures are also those types of bonds when they are issued by the companies the bonds which are issued by the government without a maturity date but with the interest payable for the indefinite period they are called irredeemable bonds or consoles or perpetuities there can be redeemable bonds with the specified time period and there can also be irredeemable bonds these are all examples of near money why are they called near money because they can be sold and purchased in the money market there is free trade of these i am not saying share market i am saying the money market you can easily go and sell and get cash and that cash you can use it anywhere they are easily sold purchased and traded in the money market therefore they are examples of near money next is the equity shares what is a share a share is a share in the capital of the company when you are investing a 10 rupees share in a company you become the owner of the company to the extent of rupees 10 equity shares give the owners a claim to share the profit of the firm which is also called the dividend when i buy shares in a company i will be receiving a part of the profit which the company is Uh, earning that part of profit which will be given to a shareholder is called dividend equity shares they are very easily marketable they are very easily traded in the stock exchange bonds and debentures are also marketable in the stock exchange uh, okay but the bills of exchange they are not traded in the stock exchange next another type of near money assets are the time deposits the saving deposits which you do with the commercial bank whatever a time deposit five year deposit 10 year deposit you are having with the commercial bank that is also called a near money because they can be easily converted into cash and then you can use that money the bankers acceptances cash surrender value of the insurance policies deposits of the building societies all these come under this category then there is a traveler check this is a comparatively outmoded type of payment supposingly you are going abroad and then a bank in india will give a sum of money saying the traveler check you can go to america and roam around and uh, just because you don't have to take care of the money you will take care you will have this traveler's check and then you can spend it because it is banked by the bank and uh, you know uh, the theft and all is just out of the coverage and you can easily travel and spend with these traveler's check but they are not very commonly in use these days then comes postal savings deposit savings in the uh, units of unit trust repurchased shares in the savings and loan association so there is a long list of near money examples now coming to the main point what is the difference between the near money and the money money proper the first is the definition money consists of the coins currency notes and the demand deposits of the banks and near money is the financial assets like the time deposits all these examples i gave you in the previous slide so the first difference relates to the definition second is liquidity i told you uh, near money has high degree of liquidity but not that much as money has money has 100% liquidity it is perfectly liquid readily accepted as a means of payment it's a legal tender money after all near money it lacks 100% liquidity but and but it is also liquid it is highly liquid asset it involves time and cost for its conversion to money it may take a little time it may take a little cost when you convert near money to money proper next is the difference related to function money serves as a unit of account is a common measure of value i told you it is the common denominator to measure the value of all the articles combined together all the prices are expressed in terms of money and near money does not perform such functions own value of near money is expressed in terms of money the meaning of this line means that supposingly you have a bond what is the value of bond say 5 lakh 
that is also expressed in terms of money so money not only expresses the value of other relatable articles it also uh, values near money the value of near money is also given in terms of money next is use in transactions money is easily readily happily used in making transactions near money is not used in making transactions it is an indirect medium of exchange first you have to convert it into money proper and then you can carry on with your transactions next point is the income yielding quality money does not income yielding asset why supposing we you have 10 lakh rupees and you keep it in an almira after a period of 6 months you open the almira the amount will be 10 lakh only that money that hard cash is not yielding any income for you but if you have near money supposing we you have a bond and you have kept 10 lakh bonds in your almira after a period of 6 months they will give you some interest so near money is an income yielding asset but money itself the hard cash is not an income yielding asset now we come over to the similarities between these two see both are claims coins and currency they are a claim over the government and the central bank bank money is a uh, claim over the respective bank supposing we you have a time deposit of say 1 lakh over state bank of india that is a bank money which is a claim over that respective bank okay near money is a claim over the respective party if supposingly a has drawn a bill of exchange on b so that is a claim over that a and b only government bond is a claim over the government agreed bill of exchange is a claim over the party which has agreed to pay the amount just as i told you so near money is a claim over that respective party it can be a company who is issuing a shares and debentures that respective party can well be a government if it is a government bond but when we talk about money this money the currency and the coin they are a claim over the government and the central bank okay next is money and near money they both are liquid liquidity is common but the degree of liquidity varies money is 100% liquid but near money is not that liquid not it is very highly liquid but not that liquid as money proper is now both these they are a store of value near money is preferred because it yields income i told you it is going to earn some interest whereas the hard cash is going to remain of the same value okay so they are a store of value and near money has an added feature that it also yields income near money influences the velocity of money see a person's ability to spend depends upon the amount of money he has with him supposingly you have 1 lakh rupees and i have 50000 rupees so you have the capacity to spend how much 1 lakh and i have the capacity to spend only 50000 so this is how it works the amount of money the person has in bank how much you have in bank and how much i have in bank that will also affect our spending powers and his ability to raise additional funds by selling his near money assets you know you can also spend you can convert your near money assets to money proper and then your spending power can go high what we are talking about in this slide is the existence of near money increases the velocity of money how does this happen supposingly i have 1 lakh cash and have kept in my almira after a period of 6 months i open my almira there is 1 lakh rupees on the other hand if i buy a bond of 1 lakh rupees a i will be purchasing that bond and i'll keeping with me and after 6 months it will give me interest that is the added advantage number 1 number 2 when i will be purchasing that government bond i will be giving 1 lakh rupees to the government what will the government do with that 1 lakh it will reinvest that money so what is happening the purchase of my that government bond is going to increase the velocity of money so see how the cash will be traveling from from me to government and then from government to somebody else you know maybe the government is giving uh, another loan of that money to somebody else and then he will be purchasing some things with those of the velocity of money 
तो दिस इंक्रीज द एग्रीगेट डिमांड इन द इकोनॉमी बाय एक्टिवेटिंग द आइडल डिमांड डिपॉजिट एंड करेंसी इफ आई वुड हैव केप्ट दैट मनी इन माई मीरा वट वुड हैव डन आई हैव जस्ट क्रिएटेड आइडल मनी विच इज नॉट मेकिंग द मेन मेन स्ट्रीम इकोनॉमी If I purchase the near money assets, I am making my money travel into the economic mainstream, and the velocity of money increases. So here I come to the end of the article. I hope I have made the things very clear to you. In case you have any doubts, please ask me in the comment section. You want to give me suggestions? You are more than welcome. Write in the comment section. Like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. Stay blessed.